Hello, my name is Jan Thielemann and in this video I want to talk about scheduling processes in IDMPR. So what is the scheduler um, and what do I need to use it? We have two main windows for this, the schedule window where we define our schedules and the scheduler where we define which process uh, should run um, on which schedule. And I already prepared um, a little example. I have uh, created this uh, sample process and all it has, it has a name parameter, which is a string. And then I log the name of the process. And I also put um, the name of the, pro uh, the parameter um, of the process um, in my context. And then I use this return message um, to replace my um, my values. So let me show this to you. Uh, here I have uh, my process in the menu and if I use Hans for example and say run, then I get Hans, here könnte ihre Werbung stehen. And um, responsible for this are two things. The first one is a message which is called Hans, I believe. No, it's not. It is called some message. So let's look for this. And you see here, <coughs> here könnte Ihre Werbung stehen, is the text for some message. And I can use the return of a process um, with this um, two ads here. And let me replace this by um, a message. So I can provide a translated return message and depending on uh, where my process exits, uh, I can use different messages. So the user can see what process da uh, did. And the other thing is I can um, put context variables during my process into my context and then also use um, this uh, yeah, writing like I would um, write a context variable, for example, if I use this in default value, I also put uh, at um, date, hashtag date, for example, for the um, current date. <coughs> so yeah, this is uh, two ways um, how to replace uh, something in the return message of the process. Uh, and as you can see, I um, get some logs regularly. Um, so every minute uh, this, this output is um, created here and uh, this is done by the scheduler. I run this process every minute. If we take a look at the scheduler window, you see I have um, created a new entry here and I called it like my process and hunt so I can better identify it. And the parameter as you can see is uh, hunts for the name parameter. Um, the process, by the way, um, looks like this. It simply calls my class. Uh, it has a name, it has a parameter, which is a uh, string, as you can see here. And uh, yeah, it's a server process. And all this checkbox does is that if you use the swing client, um, the process is not started on the swing client, it is started on the server. So if I now would run um, the swing client right here, <coughs> and yes, my application server is available, so I can log in. And you see, this is the console of my um, swing client. And if I start the process here, you see that um, the output is on my um, server. So if I go back to my uh, swing client here, you see no output on this console. And this is what, um, oops, I forgot to show you the client here. So I show it again. Okay, 
So um, that's what the server process checkbox does. So the um, process is always run on the server. Okay, but um, back to the scheduler. Here I have my um, scheduler. The schedule is uh, every minute. And as you see, there are uh, already some schedules in the system defined, like one day, seven day. And yeah, defining your own schedules is very easy. You create a new entry and say, for example, um, every two days. And then you can choose between cron scheduling patterns. And uh, if you want to learn more about cron scheduling, then you can visit this link. Um, it's also, I believe, in this, if you click in this field, you get the tooltip uh, where it has the, the link to the page. So yeah, you can define uh, cron patterns or you can use the um, easier frequency if you only want to run something uh, every uh, some day, hour or minute. <coughs> if you need a more complex way, for example, you want to run it every Monday on 1 a.m., then you would use um, cron scheduling. But if uh, frequency is enough for you, then you can say, for example, every two days. And yeah, that's it. And uh, yeah, that's how easy it is to define a schedule. Then you have this run on IP, uh, which is this. And uh, I prepared an example for this. So here I have a process, uh, a, a scheduler entry for my process. And this uses the schedule every minute system on a remote host. And if I take a look at this, then you see it's a cron pattern and it should only run on the IP 123, 123, 123, 123. And yeah, you can use this field to, um, if you have more than one server application, then you can define that this process should only run on uh, this specific IP and not on every um, server if they use the same database but you have more than one instance of the server. So uh, yeah, I checked the, um, the system schedule here. So only the system client can use the schedule. And I um, entered the IP here. And if I take a look at my, um, my overview right here, you see that um, I only have this process here. So if I would remove this, and save it. Oh, I'm not uh, sure if it's, this is enough, but yes, there it is. There's the process and now it's also scheduled on my machine, but I don't want this because it's for the remote host. So I can put it back in here. So yeah, um, create a schedule, uh, create a process, and then go to the scheduler window and um, create your entries here. And then you can um, put the parameters um, in here with which the process should uh, run. And if you want to send notifications, then you can um, define here who should um, receive them. Yeah, the log is uh, all, uh, every time the process is um, scheduled, the logs are written um, to this uh, tab here. And also, if you want to um, get more information, then you can take a look at the process audit window. And here also the process uh, logs are uh, visible. For example, if you use uh, add log in your um, process, then this entries will be visible here, I think. Yeah, here you can see with which parameters the process was started. And yeah, when you create a new one, so um, let me do this real quick. The schedule is every minute, supervisor system. Uh, if you have a process on a tab right here, then you can use um, the table of this tab and the process and run the process with specific entries. Um, 
But what wanted I to show you? Okay, I wanted to create a new um, scheduled process on the fly. So here I create a new one. And uh, if we wait some time, then we will see that the process will not start. And that's because it's not um, loaded. If I um, refresh this, you see that the um, should not run process is still uh, on this page. So I have to hit reload. And now I have my two processes and now they should run fine. Um, every minute. So uh, where do you, uh, how do you get here? <laughs> you go to your server and uh, without a slash web UI, and then you have here this uh, monitor. And here you can uh, reload the processes or see when the last time, uh, when was the last time the process was run and uh, when is the next time the process will run. So here we see I am Peter, so the process started at least one time. I hit refresh and now we can see uh, the last time and uh, when will it run again. So yeah, um, that's how you can use the scheduler in IDMPR to run process, uh, processes <laughs> whenever you need them. You also um, saw that you can replace um, or let IDMPR replace the return string of a process with either context variables or with messages, translated messages uh, from the application dictionary. And uh, I hope this video helps you and I see you in the next video.